Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our POS Made Easy webinar today. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, good morning, I guess, to those of you on the West Coast and Mountain Time and Central, and good afternoon for those of you on uh, East Coast. Uh, we're just waiting a couple of minutes here. Generally, um, I just wait a couple minutes to see if anyone else is going to join us, and then we will get started. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, welcome to POS Made Easy. Uh, today, we just want to give you a few, um, I guess, tricks and tips that we think might um, help you to make the, um, the front desk and the point of sale more efficient. All right, so as always, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, the duration of this webinar is approximately 20 minutes. Uh, we short and sweet today, and then of course we'll always make time um, to answer any questions that you guys have at the end. Uh, my microphone is on and everyone else ha uh, has been automatically muted, so hopefully you're hearing me by now. And if you're not, hopefully you're going to turn your speakers on at this point. Um, questions will be taken during the webinar as well as at the end. So you guys, you can use the chat box or the question section to ask questions during the webinar. Um, if it's something that I feel isn't necessarily related to the topic, I might ask you to save it till the end, or I might ask you if it's something completely unrelated, I might ask you to email that through to the education team. All right, so our learning outcomes for today. Um, in this webinar, you'll learn how to quickly add products and services using keyboard shortcuts, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> from your keyboard to the point of sale. Um, you'll learn about discount and refunding transactions. Uh, we'll learn about uh, keeping track of expenses and petty cash, uh, providing a quote for a client, uh, how to find your way around the transaction list, as well as uh, group transactions together um, so that two or more clients can pay with one uh, transaction or one bill. Okay, the style of the webinar today, you guys, is we've actually gone and we've pulled some of the videos from our learning center. So what we'll do is we'll actually um, bring up the slide and then we'll play through those videos. Uh, some of them I might talk through a bit, but mostly I'm just going to play the video for you guys so you can watch the process of each of these. Any questions before we get started? All right. Okay. So you guys add products and services using keyboard shortcuts. Okay. So we just wanted to show you here. You do have the keyboard. Up at the top, you have those function keys. Okay. So the keyboard shortcuts that you can use is you can use your F2 function key, you guys, to add services to the point of sale, okay? So if you have top services configured, what it will do is when you hit F2, it will send you to that top service menu and you can easily add some of your services that are um, maybe frequently booked or frequently added on at the point of sale. Um, if you only have a single top service configured because um, maybe it's conditioning treatments, maybe it's toners, maybe it's just this item that you always are adding on at the point of sale, if you have a single item and you hit F2, it will just automatically add that onto your sale. 
Okay. The F3 option, you guys, will allow you to bring up a product search at your point of sale. So if you click F3, it'll bring up a search box, and then what it will allow you to do at that point is type in the product that you want to add on for the customer. Okay. And then we also have F5. So obviously, you guys, um, we if we have barcodes on our products and we have those programmed, we want to be able to scan them with the barcode scanner and just add them on to the point of sale. However, if for whatever reason your barcode isn't scanning but you can see the number, you can click F5 and you can type in that barcode and it'll allow you to find the product that way. Okay, any questions about that? All right, so show your function keys. So just to review what we just talked through, F2 shows the top services. And again, if you only have a single top service configured, then you'll be able to add that um, to the point of sale by pressing F2. F3, again, product search. Okay, and then F5 will allow you to search for it with the barcode. Whoops. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about today is discounting and refunding at the point of sale. Obviously, these things make uh, point of sale more efficient if we know how to do these easily and quickly. Okay, so I'm, again, I'm just going to play the video here. I'll talk through some of it. I'm not going to talk through step by step, but I will talk through and point out the sections and what we're walking through. Oh, not sure what happened there, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and start that over there. We'll just get it to the point. Sorry about that. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's walked us through setting up discount reasons as well as being able to apply them and remove them at the point of sale. Looks like we might have a question. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about is keeping track of petty cash and expenses at the point of sale, you guys. And I just do want to point out as well that the reason why we're highlighting the Learning Center videos here and using these in the webinar today is generally this is what we will be um, creating as far as support um, for you guys um, to go and find on our website when you're looking to be able to set something new up or be able to... Um, um, you know, create something else in your system or simply utilize something that you're not doing already. All right, so keeping track of petty cash and expenses. So we go set up configuration. Okay, looks like some of you might have an issue hearing the video today, so give me just a moment here, you guys. All right, so let's try that again. So keeping track of petty cash and expenses. So what this video is going to do, you guys, is going to walk us through setting them up as well as how to manage them at the point of sale. All right, so let's talk through that again, and then I'll, set, I'll do that for you. All right, so setting up expenses and processing expenses through the point of sale and as well as managing petty cash. Okay, so we'll go to the setup menu. We'll go into configuration and then in the sales setup menu, we'll go into expenses. Okay, so we have some default expenses set up generally. You can see what's in the list. To add a new one, select the new button and then you'll just type in the name of the expense that you would like to set up. Also you can see it's active 
And then the tick box below is this expense paid with petty cash. So if we're taking the money out of the drawer, we need to make sure that's checked. I can also put a description as well, and I can apply a tax if I need to also. And then I would save that, and then that's available to use. Okay, so at the point of sale here, we'll then walk you through the process of processing expense. So if I go to clients and then hashtag expense, and then click on my free sale line, you can see I can select any of the items available and then put in the amount that I spent on that. Okay, of course that will print a receipt for us and then I can report on that as well. Okay, the other way we track expenses is doing petty cash. So if I click no sale and then click take petty cash, I simply then enter into shortcuts what I'm taking out of the drawer at this point. Okay, I would then go away to the store and purchase whatever I need to purchase and then come back and tell shortcuts how much I spent. Okay, so I'm telling shortcuts how much I took out. I'll go back to no sale, and then I'll go into return petty cash. Okay, at this point, I will select the one that I just created and then choose done. And then again, I can specify what I spent this on. Okay, so I took 50. I really spent 31.50. Okay, and then the drawer tells us to return 1850. Okay, it's just telling me I must put that money back in so I can then balance the drawer. Okay, so that's how to set up expenses and then how to process an expense transaction as well as how to manage petty cash. Okay, and you guys remember, these videos are available on the Learning Center. You can see what it's doing is it's showing you all of the other available videos that we have as well. Okay, so if you missed something in today's webinar, the webinar will be recorded and put up on the website. But even better, you guys, you can go to the Learning Center and find these videos. Okay. So the next one is providing a quote for a customer. So the quotes feature is something that you can enable in shortcuts. And then what this does, you guys, is it simply would allow you to potentially do a consultation for a customer, um, uh, ring them up at the point of sale for a quote where you would recommend any services you're saying they need to have done, and maybe even the home care that they need to take home after they have the services. Print that up on a quote and then present that to the customer. You could then put a note in the customer file as well, specifying that on X date you gave that customer a quote. Okay, so we'll play that video and I'll talk through this one as well. So printing a quote. Okay, so first we just want to ensure that it's set up. So again, set up configuration. In the point of sale setup screen here, generally your configuration opens to that, you can see you have enable quotes down there at the bottom. Okay, and then you can put quote terms as well, like prices are subject to change at any time or this quote is valid for 14 days or whatever it might be. Okay, simple setup for that. Okay, when you have quotes enabled at your point of sale, which is where we're taking you here. You can go ahead and create a quote. You might even, of course, want to bring through a customer file as well for that. Again, add any services we're recommending that they have, and then you can see the quote button is there. And then this is what the quote would actually look like for the customer. Okay, so before any payment is put in, you have that quote button. 
Okay, so this is a really great, great way to manage what you've quoted to a customer because you can give that to them. You could keep a copy of it too if you wanted, but probably we don't need to do that because we don't need paper floating around. Um, but we can also then, as I said, if I ring that up against a customer file, uh, put that in their, um, in their notes as well. Okay, so that's providing a quote to a client. Okay, whoops, it's jumping around on me a bit. All right, so the next one we're going to look at is finding your way around the transaction list. So obviously, you guys, when we're ringing up uh, transactions through the point of sale, sometimes we make mistakes, right? So um, we might ring something up under check that should have been cash. Um, probably a lot of us don't take check anymore, so that button might not be enabled, but it might happen, right? Or for those of you that don't have integrated credit cards, um, you might ring something Visa that should have been MasterCard or vice versa, and I need to change that. Okay, so this video will just give you um, some, well, help you find your way around the transaction list and give you some um, details and overview of what you can do in here. All right, so we'll find the transaction list, you guys, in the point of sale screen. Up at the top on the right, you can see it says trans number 14. That's where we click to see our transaction list. Okay, so I can see all the transactions that happen for the day, whether it's walk-in against a customer expense. I can click on the date at the bottom and go to another day as well. Of course, you have to have security access to be able to do that. Okay, I can see, again, the transaction number, I can see the customer name, how they paid, and the total amount. I can expand any transaction and see what, what, they, what the detail of the transaction is as well. Okay, if I click on any of these transactions and right-click, I can reprint a receipt, void it, get payment details, or go to the customer card. I can change the employee. Again, you have to have security access to be able to do that, but if you've put it under the wrong employee, you can change that. Okay, we talked about how I can change a payment type. So I would click on the, the transaction and click on payment. I can delete a transaction, but again, you have to have security access to be able to do that. Okay. And I have the filter now as well. So if you're looking for a specific transaction or a specific type of transaction, so a certain client or buy a certain payment type or whatever it might be, you would be able to find hopefully that information in here. Okay, so just some tips and tricks around how to navigate around your um, transaction list. And um, of course, that's where our end of day is as well. So hopefully you guys are familiar. I also have the transactions total tab. Okay, and this gives me the transactions for that day. And you can see I have takings, redemptions, and all of that. And I can expand those areas to see my cash, Amex, card breakdown. And I can also see it by session. All right, so that's finding our way around the transaction list. Okay. 
The next one, you guys, is grouping transactions together at the point of sale. Okay, so um, this video uh, is actually on appointment groups and point of sale groups. So I'm actually going to skip the part on appointment groups because we actually covered that last time uh, when we talked about the appointment book. Okay, so I'm going to let this start, and then I'm going to skip to the point of sale part. Okay, so after the appointment group is created, we'll go ahead and start it from here. Okay, so after the appointment group is created, you can see it says just check out that single client or check out the group. It then takes that, that group to the point of sale and creates one transaction for both of those customers. And then I can pay and they can check out like that. Easy, right? Okay, there's also a way that I can actually create a group transaction at the point of sale as well by clicking in the drop down and choosing that hashtag group option. And then I just click on the little gray block next to anybody that's part of this group. Okay, so we have Veronica and Matthew. Okay, so we've selected both of those clients. Okay, if, and then when I choose done, you can see it does the same thing as our appointment group when brought through to the point of sales. It creates one transaction with a group total. Okay, so I have Veronica and Matthew that as a group owe $130. Okay, I can still see their individual transactions, so I can go to Veronica. I can apply a discount to her transaction here. So it takes $10 off the total. If I go back, you can see that it's now adjusted my group total as well. Okay, I can go ahead and I can add my tip also. Okay, we would select the employee. If I want to see everybody, I just change it to all and then assign gratuities. and then end that sale. Okay, so that's grouping clients at the point of sale. Okay, so just to review the items that we covered today, and again, you guys, I apologize for the technical difficulties to get started there. So for those of you that, of course, we didn't hear the audio for the discount um, video. So for that, you guys, keep in mind that you can find that on the Learning Center. So I'm going to show you the link for the Learning Center in just a moment. Um, in there, for that discount video, you'll go to Shortcuts Fusion. And then you'll go to the point of sale section and you'll find that video, okay? Uh, but what we covered today is you guys quickly adding products and services using keyboard shortcuts, so those function keys on our keyboard, okay? Um, discounting at the point of sale. Um, somehow we missed the video on tra uh, refunding transactions, you guys, but you'll find that video in there as well. Okay, so again, you'll go to the Learning Center, you'll go to Shortcuts Fusion, and you'll go to point of sale. Okay, um, keeping track of petty ca cash and expenses, providing a quote to a customer. This is a really cool tool, you guys, so some of you might want to try that out, especially those of you that do things like extensions and, and um, those kinds of treatments. Uh, find your way around the transaction list and then grouping uh, customers together at the point of sale. Okay, so again, for any of you that have questions, you guys, we'll hang out for some Q&A. Okay, I think a couple of you did ask questions throughout. Most of it was about the sound. Again, I apologize about that, you guys. Okay, so you guys, this webinar will be recorded. I'll probably try to edit it a bit and get some sound in there. Um, but this webinar will be recorded and hopefully up on the website in a couple of weeks' time. Okay, but what I really do want to highlight here, and whoops, we spelt center wrong. 
is I do want to highlight you guys the Learning Center. So if you go to our website, shortcuts.net, and then go to the community page. So you could simply type in this link, right, shortcuts.net slash community. Um, you can find our learning center, okay? Also, you guys, very, very easy. You can go in your tools menu in Shortcuts, click on your support and logins page, and it actually loads the community page for you right now, right there. And then the Shortcuts Learning Center is the icon right in the middle. And you'll just go ahead and click on that, and it'll take you there. Okay. And you guys, if you, of course, if you have further questions, you can always email them through to education. Or if it's just a general inquiry, you can send it through via Facebook. You can give us a call um, on either the 714 or the toll-free number for those of you that are in Canada or long distance. So we'll hang out for a couple more minutes if there are any questions, you guys. Again, thank you so much for joining us today, and um, thank you for sitting through uh, the technical difficulties there, and I hope you guys were able to get some cool tips and tricks about uh, shortcuts today that you'll be able to implement at your point of sale. All right, it looks like everyone's got their questions answered. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day, and hopefully you join us for our next webinar. Thank you.